Hey everybody, it's Mitch here, bringing you the first episode of my new Football Manager 2014 series here with the Ecuador men's national team. So this is a new series I'm going to be starting using Ecuador, and I, like, and I love managing international teams, so managing Ecuador was a pretty easy choice for me. Um, I chose them because I was really impressed with their performance. well, not really impressed, but I had picked them as a sleeper team before this World Cup in real life to uh, reach the quarterfinals, and well, clearly that didn't work out as they didn't advance past the group stage, but I still think this team is pretty solid all around, so I wanted to start a career with them and see how it went. And I've also never really done an international managing in South America. I've done a lot in Europe and Africa and Asia, but I haven't done one in either of the Americas. So I figured I'd try South America because there aren't many teams and stuff like that. So this episode, basically I'm just going to go over the squad, talk about goals for the squad, and then um, go on and play the first game, which is a friendly match against Bulgaria. And Bulgaria... Our team, I have a very long save that I've done. It's gone about 25 years, I want to say. So it, they have a special place for me in Football Manager, and I've been playing that save for a couple of months now. So it's going to be fun to play them. And then in the next episode, we'll I'll tackle both games against Venezuela and Colombia. So if we look at the World Cup qualifiers table, we sit 7th with 12 points. Now I'm not sure if this is actually how it was at this date in real life, but we sit 7th with 12 points, uh, 4 matches remaining. And if we look at that fixture schedule, we see that only one of them is an easy, looks like an easy win, and that's home against Venezuela. Colombia home, Uruguay away, and Chile away will all be difficult games to win, so that's going to be tough. The only team that's qualified already is Argentina with a 13-0-0 perfect record in Brazil, which are the hosts. And then we look at Paraguay and Peru are surprisingly winners. So this definitely isn't the real life stuff because neither of those teams came close to qualifying for the World Cup. And we have Chile, Colombia, and Ecuador here. So we'd probably have to win at least three of our last four to qualify for the World Cup. I don't think qualifying for the World Cup is really realistic if seeing as how we're in 12, with how we have 12 points and we'd have to get past Peru, Chile, and Colombia. However, we are playing both Chile and Colombia, so that would be an interesting thing to watch. Seeing if we can get up, but really I'm focused more towards the Copa America 2015, which is hosted in Chile, and that'll be that'll be the next big competition that we've been looking into until the uh, World Cup qualifying for 2018. So here we're going to take a look at the squad, and you see here that Jefferson Montero has suffered a double hernia the day before our game, and uh, I was worried about this because he's one of our best players. Sorry about that Skype thing. He's one of our best players, and I thought he was going to be a cornerstone at the attacking midfielder left position, so we'll just have to play Johnny Uchuari. So Montero, I'm going to miss the next two matches as well, and also there's no time to call up an injury replacement. Also going down for injuries were Joffre Guerron, and I replaced him with Carlos Garces, and, uh, and Carlos Grueso, who I replaced with Jefferson Orajuela. So we'll take a look at the squad now, we'll sort by position. So our main goalkeeper is Alexander Dominguez, he's a 26 year old, been capped 13 times for the national team. And he's a pretty good keeper, he has nice jumping reach, and he's not great in anything, but he's pretty solid in most of his stats, so he's going to be a pretty solid goalkeeper. And then our two backups are Damian Lanza and Maximo Banguera. Now Lanza is an injury replacement for Adrian Bone, who's currently out, and he'll be our third or second choice goalkeeper when he comes back. Um, and then, in terms of central defenders, our best central defender is Frickson Eraso. Eraso is good jumping reach, natural fitness, teamwork, work rate, marking, tackling. So he really has very good composure, marking, tackling. He really has very good stats for a center back that you kind of want to see. And he can also play sweeper keeper, though I don't really plan on playing him there. He plays for Flamengo in Brazil. And then we also have John Narvaez, I think that's how you say it, Narvaez, who has a good work rate, good tackling, pretty solid marking and heading, anticipation, composure, decisions. So he's a pretty solid wing back. He's probably not going to be our first choice right back, though. Um, where is he? Uh, here. Juan Carlos Paredes is most likely the first choice wing back. He's pretty solid in most categories. 
although he struggles and he's not a great tackler, but he'll probably be our first choice right back. Oh, actually, maybe not. I didn't realize he was that bad at playing right back. Wow. I did not realize that by selecting him for the squad. I didn't realize he was just a wing back. So no, uh, that will be our wing back. And then for left back, Diego Calderon is going to... Well, actually, he's not. I thought he was going to miss the match due to injury, but no. He'll be back, so he's a pretty solid player. 17, natural fitness. Luis Fernando Leon is a 20-year-old uncapped player who has pretty good potential. And he looks like he can develop into a pretty solid player. He plays for Independiente del Valle. And Denis Quinones is a defensive midfielder who plays more as an anchor man. So he, he's a pretty solid defensive midfielder. I'm just going to run through the rest of the squad, squad pretty quickly. Uh, let's see, who did I miss? Giovanni Nazareno is another left back. Capped nine times, his first cap uh, coming against Mexico in 2008. So he, he's a pretty solid. So none of these guys are really elite players, but they all have pretty solid stats. So the defense is something that is going to need to be improved when our regens join in the first couple of seasons. Uh, Segunda Castillo I did not show. He's a defensive midfielder. He's 31 years old. He's been capped 71 times. And he has good heading. So he's a pretty all-around solid midfielder. Christian Novoa is a 28-year-old. He's been capped 27 times. And he's probably our best central midfielder. Uh, he has pretty good stats above 12 in almost everything except for aggression in his mentals. So pretty good stats there. Uh, Jefferson Orelueja is an injury replacement who I don't really plan on playing. He's just replacing the injured Carlos Grueso, who will be back the next one. He's a pretty good flair, but nothing else. Uh, Ener Valencia, the World Cup star from real life, will definitely be getting some time at a, a right attacking mid, or even left, left, oh my god, sorry, I just banged my desk, or even left attacking mid. He's made seven appearances for the national team. Uh, he still has room to grow. Uh, Junior Sornosa plays for SC Bastia. I think that's how you say it. He's 19 years old, never been capped, but has really good potential. So I'm looking forward to seeing what I can get out of him. Antonio Valencia, I'm sure you all know, Manchester United man. Probably the, yeah, definitely the best player on this team. Uh, he's kind of capped 63 times. Determination, look at all those, look at those physical stats. Uh, those are the die for. So he'll be starting at right attacking mid. Uh, Johnny Uchuari is a left attacking mid. Who has a lot of potential? He's joining Fenerbahce on January 1st, so he's been a pretty good player. Michael Arroyo is our main central attacking midfielder. He's got above 12s or 11s in every, almost every category in mentals, technicals, and physicals. So he's a pretty well-rounded player. Fernando Gaibor looks like he'll be ready for the match. He was also injured, so he's in a central attacking midfielder with good potential. Has some lacking in the mental stats, but he has pretty good physicals, so I'm not too worried about that. Jefferson Montero, can't remove him from the squad. He's injured. I've talked about him already. Joao Rojas uh, is a striker. good, Pretty good striker. Three and a half stars. Has pretty good uh, attack, except not, positioning's not great. Not really, not really a real worry, but it's not something you really want to see. Uh, Felipe Caicedo. Probably one of the more well-known players. He's made 41 caps for for Ecuador. He's only 24 years old. And he has 15 composure, 14 finishing, and 13 technique. So he'll be a pretty good finisher, that's for sure. Uh, but he's only been instructed to play 45 minutes. And then Carlos Garces is an injury replacement who has some good potential, but I don't really plan on playing him. So that's pretty much going to do it for the squad. Now I'm going to talk about the tactic. So this tactic is a, yes, it's a plug-and-play tactic, but it's one I found on the FM base, and that's one that's had so much success for me. I figured I might as well just use it. I'm not a great tactic person. I don't, I'm not great at developing my own tactics, so I do often go with these plug-and-plays, and this one seems to have worked really well for me, so I figured I'd just go with it. It has a home and an away version, so for home games, obviously I'm using the home version and away games. Neutral site games... That'll come to tail. I usually prefer the home tactic, but it also has a left striker, which is a little bit hard to place players there unless you have guys who are really sufficient at left attacking mid. And clearly, we really don't, besides Montero, who's hurt, and Uchuari, who's not really... I don't know if he's starting high, but clearly, the strength of this team is in the offense and not in defense. 
So it'll be clear to see. I think we can get some goals off counterattacks and stuff like that. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and start this matchup against Bulgaria. So as I said, Bulgaria is a team I've played before in FM that I've gotten to three World Cups with and nearly won one before. I know the Vasilevsky National Stadium. So we're going to just quick pick the squad and see what we got. So Caicedo, Rojas, Valencia, Novoa, Quinones, Valencia, and also Leon, Nardes, I guess that looks like a solid side. And we will proceed to the match. And so that's the squad we're going to put out. And I'll probably make some changes around halftime because it's a friendly and all, but I'd like to see a win with this tactic. So, yep, I know most of these players. So this is going to be a pretty, I don't know, I guess it's kind of sentimental match for me, even though it's just a video game and, you know, it's just the team that I've been playing with. But my team's all regens now. But anyway, both Bulgaria and I, the draw seems the most likely result. So they're huge favorites to win this game. So... Um, I'm not expecting too much. I don't usually set opposition instructions. We should encourage the team, despite everyone considering underdogs here. Let's say and go out there and impress me. I've got faith in you. So yeah, this is pretty much how I'm going to do team talks, but usually I get some sort of green. I don't get a lot of red. I, I feel like I'm a pretty good team talker. Anyway, we're going to get this match started. Um, so basically... The goal of this series is, you know, to eventually win a World Cup with Ecuador. I mean, obviously, it might be a little bit hard, but the goal, that's the goal. And win Copa Americas, which I don't believe Ecuador's ever won. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't believe they've ever won. And here, we've got Arroyo. But anyway, uh, Rojas. Anyway, I'm looking forward to this series. I think it'll be a lot of fun. And I'm hoping you guys enjoy it as much as I do, because I love playing this game, Football Manager. And I'm definitely going to have a ton of fun with this series. And... We look at Valencia. See, this is the kind of stuff in FM, this little, you know, showing the highlights for five minutes of people running around. We'll see what they can do here. Noboa to Antonio Valencia. Caicedo. Oh, that's a beautiful chip. Or not even a chip, tip. That's a very nice goal by Felipe Caicedo. That's beautiful football right there. I'm very pleased with that. You know, some good passing, getting in to the attacking third, and getting through the defense onside and getting past the keeper, that's where Caicedo's finishing comes in. So that's a really impressive finish. And Caicedo, I think, is going to be the main goal-scoring threat on this team. He plays for a United, he plays for an Emirati team in the UAE, but I feel like he's still going to be a pretty solid player, all told. Um, he He's really good at finishing. I actually liked playing with him in feet in FIFA 14. He's pretty fun to play with, so um, I'm looking for a lot from him in here. Oh, that's going to go to Nikolay Mikhailov, who was my keeper in my save quite a while until he, uh, until he started to decline. But uh, here we've got a little bit of an attack going. Caicedo again. Antonio Valencia. No, see. See, that, that's a really weak shot, and I'd rather see him pass there and try to get something else, but instead he's going to go for that. So, anyway, this is just a pretty basic... Uh, Pretty basic game play is probably what I'm going to do. All right, I'm going to slug him out. Christian Novoi plays midfielder center right. So let's put Guy Boy in. All right, and he'll come off, and now we've got Rojas needs to come off too. So I'll take him off once this substitution gets made. Attacking midfielder left, so we'll put Uchuari in. Well, I usually probably, probably put pep talks, but I'm not, I don't usually do that. So, um, so there's two substitutions. Now, hopefully, we don't concede here. I, I don't really would like not to see this, and we concede. So I got four of the guy. <sighs> That's football manager for you. Really, just look at this play. Like, that was a good cross. Well, not really a great cross, but he heads it back, and then this guy's completely left unmarked. Nothing you can do about that. I that's not a good that's not a good finish there. In terms of our defense. As I said, the defense is gonna be the weakness of this team. Really, it's not gonna be a strength. There's not a lot to talk about this defense, but let's say let's tell the team to encourage the team and we got all green. So let's make some substitutions. Okay. Uh overview. What am I doing? Overview. Let's move Arroyo out. Attacking the focus on him. Let's take 
them out and put in Emma for Valencia. Let's put in, well, we have to put on a central defender to get out of Erasso. So we'll put in Diego Calderon. And Felipe Caicedo needs to come out. Because what happens is if you have a player, I know this from my Bulgaria save, if you have a player that they say play 45 minutes and you play them more than 45 minutes, the manager can withdraw them from your next competitive squad, which you really don't want to happen. I, I learned that the hard way. So I like to withdraw players that have there. So I think that's all we're going to do for halftime substitutions. Um, we'll get the second half started. Yeah, so yeah, they can pull the players out of the squad for competitive matches, so that's not something you want to see happen, so always make sure to sub out players that have 45 minutes on their thing, which, you know, I make sense, it's a friendly, I, I can understand that, um, I can understand, you know, wanting to give your players a rest, and getting yourself, you know, ready for the club season, but it's... Like, not even, it's early club season now. So, like, some of these guys, like, he plays, like, Felipe Caicedo plays in the United Arab Emirates. Like, I guess you could, maybe you want to rest him. I mean, no, I don't, no, I don't, I don't make much in those countries. Maybe I should manage an angel one day. If you have an idea for a club save, let, let me know, you know, for a club save I could do with football manager. Because I, I do prefer international saves, but I definitely, if you, you know, want to do a club save, and I'm not looking for a team that's, like, in, like, the fourth division, but, like, a team in the first or second division that has some money and a chance to, well, it doesn't have to have a ton of money, but a chance to some good players. And if they score, oh, off the post. All right, that's pretty, that's, that's pretty pathetic that we almost let that in. Anyway, if, if you have any recommendations, just uh, let me know. Like, I'm definitely be open to doing another football manager series with uh, another different team. But um, for now, I think I, I'm really going to stick with this and enjoy this. So this will be pretty fun. And we look at, or Ajuela's, uh, I don't know if I'm that wrong, I think I have, his conditions down below 70, but it's a friendly, so I'm going to leave him in. Uh, Quinones, I think I'm going to sub out, though. Let's see what we can do here. Quinones, defensive midfielder, center left. I can't make any more substitutions. Okay, never mind that then. I thought there... I thought FM didn't have a limit for the substitutions you could make in the game, so this is going to be a highlight because we're 88 minutes into the game, so hopefully this is a positive highlight on our end. Try to get some sort of attack going. Orejuela to Uchuari. Uh, Gaibor and we get possession. So hopefully we can get possession back or beat them on, on they cannot beat us on the counter. If they beat us on the counter, that'd be pretty pathetic. Uh, I'd be okay with the draw here. It's a friendly match against a team. It's not great, but probably about our skill level. But and that goes over the bar. Whew. Shots like that get you a little bit worried sometimes. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how the team has played today. Even if we are only, it's you know, it's only 46, 54 percent possession. So this is going to go down as a pretty solid 1-1 draw. I'm pretty impressed with the performances. Uh, we. Completed 75% of our passes and won 91% tackles. So I'd say it was pretty, and we had uh, we had almost 35% shots on target ratio. So I'm pretty impressed with that result, and we get all good, because I'm just that good at team talk. So I'm pretty impressed with um, how the match is going. So that's pretty much going to wrap up this episode, I think. Um, so I appreciate you guys watching. If you want to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, you know. Just let me know how, what you think about this series, and I'll be back, I guess, maybe tomorrow or Wednesday for episode two. Thanks, guys. It's Mitch here. Have a nice day.